Okay, so this is like the third time that I have done this today. So just bear with me, all right, people? This is Wentworth, um, season six, episode three, Bleed Out. This is my review for it. Now coming in, we know that Frankie has been shot. That's first thing. Um, little sister Ruby, one of the new people, she has been beating everybody ass in this fight club. And... Her, her older sister used to be a boxer, too, so I'm guessing that's where she got the whole inspiration behind boxing. And we know that Sonya tried to kill Liz for snitching, well, for damn near trying to kill her. Because remember last season, Liz uh, was the one that put something in her tea. So um, she tried to kill her, but come to find out it wasn't Liz in the shower, so she wound up killing Spike's girlfriend. And we also know that Vera is pregnant, child, by Drake's, by Jake's bitch ass. Ugh, that man drives, just grinds my gears, everything about him. So anyway, it comes in and Frankie is in this bathroom turning blue. And she is trying to get signaled to call Bridget. Wound up, you know, trying to talk to herself in order to, like, keep herself woke. Bridget wound up getting her in time, which was great. God, I love me some Frankie Doyle, child. So then I'm going to be going up and down with this episode. Bear with me. So now back at the back to the prison, they are watching the news and they're like telling them that they shot Frankie. So Boma, Boma, everybody is screaming at the damn TV. Fuckers, blah, blah, blah. Because they mad. Like I'm mad that they shot my boo. But okay. And, um... The other cop, the other guard, what's his name? Jackson. Jackson is losing his mind because Jackson, remember Jackson on season four, not season four, season five, the ending, he is the one that buried Ferguson's ass. Crazy. Oh my God, that lady is crazy. She's the devil herself. He's the one that buried her. Child. So he's going through it. He keep thinking about it. He keep having flashbacks about it. In the midst of his flashback, he winds up smacking Liz's hand into the goddamn hot ass pot. And um, next thing you know, you got um, Sonya and Liz in this bathroom discussing. You know, Sonya's trying to be nice to her, and they basically discussing that she they're going to turn on the lawyer dude that tried to seduce Liz in order to get her to be persuasive enough to get her to um, to turn on Sonya and say that Tonya killed somebody. I don't know, which Sonya, pro Sonya probably did, y'all. I don't know. So um, next scene is Bridget takes takes uh, Frankie to the train where she was hiding out at. But she's talking to her and telling her that she needs a blood transfusion. She can't, she got to go to the hospital. And Frankie is not trying to hear that shit. Listen, Frankie, I don't even blame you, child. You didn't left this prison, escaped this prison to try to find this evidence, and you trying to get me to go to the damn hospital? I get it. I do look like I'm dying. But fuck that. A bitch going to die out in these streets until I get this evidence because I ain't going to no hospital where they going to be able to identify my ass. And I'm wanted. They going to lock me up. So she was right. So next you have Liz meeting with a lawyer to about Sonya's case and to rat the lawyer dude out to say that he was seducing her, which he did, he did. But at this point, nobody gives a fuck about what you have to say, Liz, at this point. So she's talking to her. It switches to Vera watching the news, child. She's watching the news and they talking about how Frankie Doyle has been shot and she has a female accomplice. But of course, they thinking it's Ferguson because they don't know nothing about Jackson as burying her ass alive. They don't know nothing about that. So it's a possibility that, but of course, Vera's smart. She knows, yeah, it can be Ferguson, but that don't add up. They don't fuck with each other. So it had to have been Bridget, of course, right? But in the midst of this, Jake is bringing in Sonya's ass. She is trying to get this doggone workshop back, green room, whatever the hell they was calling it. And Vera is looking at her like, girl, 
that's that was the way for the, these bitches to escape this whole workshop bullshit y'all building boxes that's how they escape no you're not getting this damn room back like what what you talking about so next scene little sis wants to fight now like she wants she want to fight but she got some rules for these damn fight 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 club bitches and she goes to them like listen i'm i'm the top bitch i'm making money i'm beating these bitches up so y'all gonna have to give me a percentage of all the fights they get into negotiating and wound up agreeing to 20 percent of of each fight and ali winds up seeing uh ruby in the workout room she punching the bag and she's telling ollie that she gonna fight that's what she gonna make as her thing to do she just gonna kick bitches ass now i'm thinking to myself why you tell ollie like ollie ass just be snitching i know you got a sweetheart and you know you be trying to look out but you girl why you how'd you even get in jail but anyway so uh Frigid are back on the, the next thing is Frigid and they on the train. For those who don't know, who haven't been watching it, Frigid means Frankie and Bridget, bitch. Okay. And, um, they talking like they, like she going to die or something. Like they talking like shit is just like the end about when they, you know, first fell in love and blah, blah, blah. And I, I don't know. It was just bothering me. Cause I, I, I don't feel like it. Like I need you to live Frankie and I need Bridget. I need you to help the bitch. So it, it's starting to look like Frankie is hallucinating, like the cops is coming after her. And I don't know, it just seems weird. Come to find out, yes, the cops are still after them, but Bridget left, so she wasn't there. She left, but she did come back. She came back with um more meds and more goals and stuff like that to help Frankie, which is good because some had to give child. If you don't go to the hospital, we gotta get the, we gotta get some type of equipment, child. So, of course, like I just said. Ollie's ass goes and tells Kaz about this fight club. Kaz finds out that it wasn't even Ru it that it wasn't even Ruby's sister that punched Spike in the bathroom. It was Ruby, bitch. Like, whatever. So Kaz is mad at Ruby's sister because she's like, why didn't you tell me? Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, why would you lie? Whatever. So Kaz is mad, whatever. And then we go back to Frigid. And Frigid is basically basically found out that Armand's ass got a storage space, a storage spot, a locked up joint. Because remember, Frankie searched everywhere. So she knew that it had to have been like, that, that storage space, it ain't old. It was recent. Child. They go check that shit out. Frankie tried to pick the lock. She rusty, I guess. Because you, you need a key. So Frankie's like, but I searched everywhere. Like, if I, like I would have saw a key, you know? So she's like, so, um, so Bridget is like, well, it would have to be in lockup. Like, storage lockup when she got booked. She might have just had it, and they stored it, you know, they stored it with the other people property shit. Bam, right on point. So leave after they, they go to the next scene, and Kaz's crew bumps into, like, literally bumping to the Fight Club bitches crew. Like, they, these bitches bumping each other, da 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 And in the midst of this, uh, Jackson's ass comes off the elevator, looking like he about to have a whole breakdown again, of course, and Kaz had to pull him to the side, like, nigga, like, relax. Like, what you did was for all of us. You didn't do nothing wrong. Like, so she's trying to ensure him that he didn't do nothing wrong. Like, I, she's like, I see you been, like, really going through it, but don't keep thinking about this shit. Like, what you did was not the wrong thing. It was the right thing to do. Everybody know that that bitch wanted to die. Well, that's how she was acting when she killed B's ass. You want to die. So you got to fucking go. So next they goes in the yard and Sonya's walking through the yard and walks by uh the bitch that they cut her tongue out. I don't remember who cut her tongue. Was it Ferguson that cut her tongue? I don't even remember. Somebody cut the bitch tongue out. So now she walking around with signs and shit telling them fuck you and all this or other shit. And she's so Liz goes, mm, I'm sorry. Sonya goes and goes sits with Liz and talking to her about this plan, but she's like 
like definite that the only way this plan is going to work is if this workshop is back up and running. So she must got something going on in her. She need that room open again. So next thing, it goes to Vera and Bridget is in the office together. First thing I'm thinking is, well, bitch, where the fuck is Frankie at? So I hope Frankie ain't hiding in the office too. Y'all didn't fucking snuck back in the prison. No, Bridget is in there sipping tea and shit with um with Vera and Vera is talking to her about about you know them saying on the news that um that Frankie had a female accomplice. Somebody got to be helping her, and she's like. I don't think that is Ferguson. Like me, out of all people, I don't think it's Ferguson because they know goddamn well that Frankie ain't trying to work with no damn Ferguson child. If anything, she would have been trying to kill her. So, child, in the midst of that, she lift up that cup and Vera seen that little bit of blood and she dropped that cup and got out, tried to get out of there. She said she got to go. And then next thing you know, Instead of her leaving, Bridget, she is in the goddamn lockup room, property lockup, trying to get the key, boo. But guess who catches her? Vera's ass. Of course Vera catches her. I'm not going to lie. I was happy that Vera, out of all people, caught her and not nobody else because Vera has a good heart. Child, Vera is like, so you you know you're going to go to jail? Like, you can go to jail for helping Frankie. Like, are you tripping? Bridget said the same shit I would have said about my baby mama. I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't care. I love her. Like, we ride together. We die together. Bad bitches for life. You feel me? So, Vera is like, whatever. Give me the bag. So, I'm like, damn. So, how the fuck we going to get the key? No, bitch. Y'all know she still had that key. So, as Bridget is trying to go back and give the key to... um to uh frankie the cops show up the homeless man then snitched child i was like homeless people they ain't don't uh, don't never be nobody don't never want to help nobody until they want they spot back his ass just wanted his train that little property back he just ain't want frankie there but that was fucked up so they wound up taking her to the join or whatever, and I'll get to that later because the next scene, Vera is uh, approaches Sonia about this whole green workshop bullshit or whatever room, and she, because Vera must have called somebody over, I mean, I'm sorry, Sonia must have called somebody over Vera's head because she's like, I don't know how you got such and such to contact me so fast, but basically plays her, but bitch, let me know. Let me let you know. The, the, I get the last say so, honey. Mm. So, you know, now this bitch got the salty face looking stupid, child. Mm. So, next scene, this is when we find out exactly what was the whole conversation with Ruby and this white guy about. Come to find out, this bitch is trying to make money overseas, boo. She's trying to get her breadsticks. Okay, where it counts, and this is the only way she's going to be able to make money. She got to make some money somehow, so that's why she want to fight. So, child, they got Bridget in this room asking her questions about Frankie, and she holding it down, being a strong woman that she's supposed to be. And don't you know they had the nerve to let her ass go? Child, she leave and goes and um go get in her car and... I guess she knew that they possibly would be following her. Like, if she was going to go back to Frankie or something like that, it was, like, probably going to be a setup. So, instead, she put the key literally under the car, like, on the goddamn concrete. She pulled off. Frankie showed up in a hoodie, picked them keys up. Child, I was so goddamn happy. I'm like, I'm just hoping that the bitch don't die by the time she get the evidence. That's all I was thinking. So, baby... They next scene, they got these bitches bought the rumble in the damn workshop that that Sonya is trying to get reopened out of all places. They in the workshop, child, bought the Ruby and is fighting Spike. Now, mind you, Spike thinks that Ruby like killed her girlfriend. But remember, Sonya thought it was Liz, and don't nobody know that child. This shit about to mm, I can't wait for like the season start getting crazy. So, in the midst of the fight, somehow Ruby gets distracted. I don't know if she was, like, celebrating too fast, but she um, she somehow gets distracted, and Spike knocks the bitch out. I'm like, 
Here we go. So she knocks her out, and they don't want to stop the fight. Ali is like, stop the fight, stop the fight. And I'm thinking, like, well, they damn sure ain't going to stop it now because how many bitches Ruby done knocked out in the last week and they ain't stop it? So I don't think they're going to just stop it for Ruby now. So in the midst of that, Ruby winds up getting up, bitch, and knocking Spike the fuck out. Like, so she wound up making her money still, but I know that shit, all that shit had to hurt because even when she was on the ground, Spike was kicking her and doing all this little extra shit or whatever. And so at this point, Kaz is mad because now she found out y'all just went against everything Top Dog said. So she tells the, the head of Fight Club, bitch, you got to see me. Come see me in the laundry room and you bring the shit. I ain't got to bring nothing. I'm going to bring these hands. So I'm like, okay, Cass, Cass about to put some work in. Okay, bam. So next scene, bitch, Frankie goes to this damn storage. And when I tell you, as soon as she got in there, the fucking law popped up. Child, I was so pissed. I was so pissed because I'm like, this is her moment. Who the fuck tipped them off? Who took... I'm like, it's over. It's over. She gonna get she gonna get killed. She ain't gonna find evidence. I was just over. I was getting real mad. I was getting real frustrated. I, I couldn't predict it. Like it was just bad. So child, as soon as she she get the digging, she get the find like looking through boxes and finding different things and just trying to do something. And when baby. When I tell you, it was like as soon as them niggas got in that storage, she found that shrine that she been looking for all this time. This bitch, Armand had fucking hundreds of pictures of them. A whole shrine of Frankie with the dude, Frankie by herself, the dude by herself, just a whole bunch of pictures of this shit. They like, put your hands where I can see him. It was like a relief for Frankie, like, she laid down. It was just like, it was going to be what it's going to be. Because at this point, even if I die, at least these motherfuckers know that I did not do this shit. Because the evidence is right here, baby. I was so goddamn happy when I seen that shit. So they switched to back to Wentworth. And now they in the laundry room because she didn't told her to bring the shit, child. So... Kaz and them is waiting. They waiting for the rumble to start. Sonya and I'm talking about like, now this bitch, this shit going to be popping. This going to be interesting. So they waiting for him. Fight club folks walk through. Fucking Boma going to say, if you die, I still want my money. Like, bitch, how the fuck she going to give you your money? I guess Boma was thinking, shit, her next to kin better get that shit up. Somebody better send something on that commissary. Shaw. So they get to like act like they about to get it in. Shivs is out, hands is thrown up. They look like they about to do something. And then these motherfuckers got the nerve to have this bitch with the missing tongue watching the door. Somebody explain to me why the fuck the bitch that can't speak is watching the door. So now they about to get it in and the guards is coming and she, mm, mm, bitch, can't nobody hear your mom and ass over all these people screaming? Who thought of that? Who the fuck? I just did not understand that. That was fucking stupid, yo. That was so dumb. So they come to the joint and break everything up and it's like, okay, who's the snitch? But whatever. Right, uh, my bad, y'all had to go check this chicken. Y'all not gonna feed these damn kids. So I believe where I left off, I was talking about um, um, bombing them in the room or whatever, and somebody came and they snitched, right? So next scene, we got Ruby's ass, because they broke the fight up. Somebody snitched, they broke the fight up. They got this bitch with no goddamn tongue trying to be watching the door, and she can't even tell nobody when nobody coming, so they broke it up. So next, Ruby is in her cell, bitch, pissing blood. You got Ali in there trying to help her ass, trying to console her, telling her that she needs to go to medical. She's like, no. So Ali tells Big Sister. Big Sister come to their little, um, they, they sell, you know, their little pot area, and she's trying to tell help Ruby and realize when she lift her shirt up that it looks like, 
she must have broke ribs or or some shit. Child, big sister said she had something in her gloves. So Spike must have had some shit in her gloves, whether it was, I don't know, locks, rocks. I don't know. She had something in there that she was just like tearing Ruby down, child. And Ruby being stubborn, talking about she don't need her sister help. She don't want her help. She don't want her lecturing her. So big sister's like, child, I ain't worried about you. Obviously, you're going to do whatever the fuck you want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you how to protect yourself for the most part. So we they go back and they got Kaz. And um, I guess the other girl that she was going at it with from the fight club, you know, separated. So they separated from general population. And that's probably where I was at, y'all. If I if I said the same thing over, don't don't mind me. I got a lot going on with these goddamn kids. So they got um cat in this room. She, they separated from um general population. And Jackson walks in there to go talk to Kaz. Come to find out, Kaz telling his ass, he she can't bash the women. I'm trying to figure out how the fuck you gonna be top dog and you ain't beating bitches' ass, put them in place. Like I get it, Kaz since she got there, she's always been on some empowering shit and all of that. But you need to be whipping bitches' asses. Like you can't get by being top dog without doing something. You sold the girl hand. What's wrong with what what's wrong with bashing a bitch a few, beating her ass a few for disrespecting you? I don't get it. But you know, it is what it is. So, but come to find out, Kaz is the snitch. Kaz is the one that basically tipped them so they can break the fight up because she wants to protect the women. She don't want to bash them. But she don't know how she's supposed to take away this fight club shit. I don't know, child. I just feel like when they find out that she was snitch, you're fucking done with. Sorry to tell you, you're fucking done. So, lastly, last scene, child, or last few scenes, they got Frankie in this hospital. And when I tell you I was happier than a motherfucker to see her there in this hospital, not dead, like, you know, because we didn't know what was going to happen. So she's sitting there in this hospital bed next. It don't even look like a real hospital, but it's cops and shit walking around. So Bridget is sitting next to her and she, you know, talking to her, but she realized she's still in cuffs. So I'm like, oh, God. So they really going to lock her ass up? And they, so the cops is telling her she's still in handcuffs because even though they found the evidence, shut up, sit down. God damn, if it ain't the kids, it's my dog, child. Um, so they found, even though they found the evidence, the shrine at Armand's space and shit like that, they can't, they saying that they can't, they still can't confirm that that Armand is the the killer. Like, you get what I'm saying? So they didn't, I guess they didn't have enough evidence, like, even though the bitch got a whole shrine showing that she was following them and all this other shit. Child, that man said, but what we did find is a phone. They found a phone with... This bitch Armand is stupid. Not only did this bitch have pictures in the shrine of them, she got pictures in the phone of this man dead body. Child, like, why? I'm, I'm just confused. So you took pictures of him after you killed him? I'm, but you framed her? Child. So, yeah. So this crazy bitch, yes, has took pictures. My Instagram popping has took pictures of this man's dead body all up in this phone, child, all up in this phone. So these motherfuckers tell Frankie, they dropping, they, they dropping all charges, yo. I was, I ain't gonna lie, I was crying. I was crying. I was crying a lot because if anybody knows and has been watching since season one, like, Frankie, out of all people, deserved that freedom. Like, 
she was already out. Like, you get what I'm saying? She was already out. And then they wind up, like, I guess the girl wound up framing her or whatever. Because I'm just like, yo, I'm really fucking tired of my Instagram popping up on here. Like, I'm really getting frustrated. And especially when it's just people going live. That shit is frustrating. So, like, yeah. So, I was, I was really crying because I love me some Frankie Doyle, yo. And she, just her smile, just seeing her smile. And she came back after being released and went to go see everybody at, at Wentworth, you know, Liz and, um, and Ali and, um, uh, and Boma, they was all sitting there talking to her and like Bridget was crying. Everybody was crying. It was just like, I was just crying tears of joy, man, because like, I love her so much and just her character in general, like she deserved that freedom. She deserved to leave with her you know, to be with her family, to be with her father, to be with her sister. It was just amazing, y'all. Like, I loved every moment of it. I hope y'all loved it. That was my review. My predictions are Ferguson ain't dead, bitch. If we got a if we got a third episode like this with a good ending, ain't no way that this bitch Ferguson ain't dead, yo. This she gotta pop out of nowhere. Either that or this new bitch that they bringing on, she's about to be like the next Ferguson, bitch. Cause like we you got to have a character like that. She made everybody want to kill her. I ain't going to tell y'all who she remind me of because I don't want my family watching this saying some shit. But she remind me of somebody that I know very, very well that grinds my gears. But, yes, leave y'all comments. If I didn't um, cover anything, um, I'm sorry if I said stuff more than once. You know, I'm doing the best that I can trying to do all this and still be a mom and still work and still write music. I'm doing the best that I can with reviewing these shows that I really love. And I just want to thank y'all for tuning in. That was my review for Wentworth. Put y'all comments at the bottom, questions, whatever the case may be, y'all predictions. And I will see y'all next week for the, for the fourth episode.